the set is dark and moody, I can only mean one thing. It's time for a level one diagnostic. <laughs> Isn't the name great? Level one diagnostic. It's so, so Star Trekian, but the pre Abrams Trek. I don't, I don't know. Now my aim here, first and foremost, is to convey an interesting story. And yeah, there'll be some technical details. And I really hope my information security peeps, my programmers, my web developers all perk up because there's a lot of good details, good information for you, good insight. Students, you can learn a thing or two. It's really interesting. Today we're gonna to take a look at the NVMe RAID drivers from AMD. We're not looking at how we're gonna set them up. We're looking at how they're built. We're gonna take them apart. Now, as the name level one diagnostics implies, uh, there's something wrong. And you know, the NVMe drivers work fine, like they physically function fine, but there are some security issues, or at least I, I think that there are some security issues. Maybe your career infosec people in the audience can tell me a little different or have a debate on the forum or whatever. But I'm gonna go over some issues that I found and yeah, you can decide for yourself. We can, we can sort of explain as we go. So you wanna run NVMe RAID on the Threadripper platform. It's totally free. You don't need a module or anything else like that. We've got these lovely OCZ Toshiba RD400 uh, NVMe drives. I've got two of them. And we're gonna set up a RAID array with these. And you know, the step-by-step -step for that is in another video. But you know, just assume, you know, what do you do? Well, uh, you install your RAID drivers and you get a shortcut on the desktop. Now, when you install your RAID drivers, it does a bunch of stuff to your system. We're gonna look, we're gonna look at all of that. Uh, but it also creates a shortcut on your desktop that takes you to you know, a program to manage, like how do you set up your RAID? Maybe you want RAID zero, maybe you want RAID one, maybe you wanna do something else. Maybe you just want a bunch of disks. Maybe you want to do something special with start size or caching, or you know, maybe you want RAID 10. I don't know, there's a lot of options. So you need to provide uh, the end user a way to configure that. So you need software. You also need drivers, uh, low level drivers for the hardware so that the operating system understands it can boot from it, for example. Um, and the drivers themselves I think are okay, just the utilities are maybe not quite as okay. Now when you install your RAID drivers, you get the RAID GUI. It's a web GUI, you can see it here. And you would think, okay, the RAID Expert 2 CGI, that's probably what's running our service. Well, no, actually, let's stop that and then let's come back here and reload that. Now we can still see that, it, that we still get the web server part of this. Okay, uh, what about this? Ah, yes, Apache 2.4. But something else comes along for the ride and that's ZAMP. So yeah, you get, you get ZAMP along with, with this as well. So if I stop this, Okay, that's no longer working. We can reload that. And that's also not working anymore either. Now I'll also mention, although it doesn't create a shortcut for it, that there are command line utilities. This is more servers. This is because Threadripper kind of is sort of a server. I mean, it's high end desktop, but it comes from a server part. So when you install the RAID drivers, you get RC admin, um, which is like a command line utility for actually managing your NVMe, your, well, your RAID array in general. It could also be SATA RAID. Although for this video and all my research and stuff, I only worked on the NVMe side of things, not the SATA side of things, but I imagine it's, it's pretty similar, if not identical to uh, what we're looking at here. Now, thinking about this, looking at this, it's like we've got this shortcut. When I double click this shortcut, it's opening a web browser. It's taking me to localhost colon a port and then it wants me to log in. Now, to AMD's credit or to the programmer's credit, uh, when you first access this on a fresh machine and you put in any username and password, it says, oh, this has never been set up before. What would you like to set your username and password? That's great. A lot of programs just hard code a username and password or have a default username and password that nobody ever changes and that turns into a security issue. So somebody's kind of paying attention at least somewhat here. So that's that's good, you gotta set a password. So you set your password and then everything's all good. Now, if you look at the shortcut, it's localhost. Localhost is only accessible from the local host. That's good, right? There's a web server here and the web server is doing something under the hood, presumably with those command line utilities for managing your array. I mean, this you know this doesn't seem that bad. This, this doesn't seem like there's anything super complicated going on. Well, let's peel back the linoleum just a little bit more. So we sort of do some poking around in the system here. Oh, 
okay, we've done some 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 under the hood here. What's what's going on? How's this put together? It's kind of fascinating. We've got Apache, the Apache web server, the open source, you know, the little web server that could, which runs half of the internet, uh, is the web server that's serving up this interface for our RAID controller. So there's the web server where you can configure your stuff. I don't, I, that's fine. I, I see no problem with that. Um, and then we look and it's like, oh, go to task manager. We check, oh, the web server process is running a system. Huh, that seems kind of weird. Uh, let's see what else is going on in the system. Okay, we can run the netstat command and we see that the web server is listening for connections from the outside as well, not just local hosts, because local hosts will only let you get to, the lo like you can only get to local host from the local computer. But it's also listening on my LAN IP address, my 192.168.0.100, which is what I happen to get from the router. Um, so anybody with that IP address on my LAN can get to that. Now, when I did the install, it popped up and said, hey, do you want to allow this program through the firewall? There was no context, there was no explanation. I think most people probably would click allow. Now, if your default firewall profile is public, Windows doesn't allow any connections on the public profile by default. So even if you hit allow, unless you explicitly check the little box there that says, okay, it's fine on public networks too, it wouldn't work. But most people on their home internet, their home computer, um, you know, it would be allowed. And so you can get a connection. So it's like, well, I guess, people connecting to my RAID management over the network, and it does require a password, isn't really that big of a deal. But wait, the drivers also install XAMPP, X-A-M-P-P. Now XAMPP is usually installed by web developers needing a local development environment. And that's accessible on port 443, which is the standard HTTPS port. Ooh, things are not really looking so good now. And if you see here, we've got the PHP info link and you click on the PHP info link and you can actually see information about the system. Oh, PHP 5.6.30, uh, that's kind of an old version of PHP. It actually has six or seven known CVE vulnerabilities. Although to be fair, they're not terribly serious, but uh, yeah, hmm, that's not good. Let's check the Apache configuration because in Apache, you can tell the Apache process, hey, don't let anybody just access the whole drive. You're only restricted to this folder. Oh, well, that's not the case. The entire C drive can be read and manipulated by the Apache process. It's actually running as the system user. So between XAMPP being accessible on port 443, which has the developer tools, I mean, you can just run arbitrary PHP, um, you can open things like, let's do a quick test. Let's try to open notepad.exe from system 32 from our XAMPP process. Yeah, that's permitted. Uh, that's probably not good. So what, what do we do? How do we fix this? Well, it turns out that the Apache process is just a GUI for configuring your array. It doesn't actually have to be running all the time. You can go to services and stop it and only start it when you need it. So you can bring up the services snap in and you know hop down to the service and set it to manual start and then only manually start it whenever you need to configure your RAID array. That'll mitigate some of the issues. If you're a little more adventurous, a little more on the web programmer side of things, you can modify your Apache configuration. Apache knows like Apache is designed to run in an environment where uh, people are trying to break in and it's crazy. And so there's a directory directive in Apache that you can tell Apache, hey, my web root is here and some files you need to access outside the web root are over here, but for the rest of the drive, don't let anybody access it. And no matter what overrides you have, no matter what other steps you do to the process, Apache will not let the web program or whatever you're happening to run access this. Now, why would they have done this? Well, I think, I'm not sure, but I think it's because the looking at the PHP source code here, you can see how um, the programmer wants to call like the command line utilities basically uh, as an administrator to be able to manipulate the array. And that kind of makes sense. You have the command line utilities that you don't want an unprivileged user on the system to be able to run arbitrary commands to manipulate your array. It has to be privileged. But I'm not sure that making the Apache process a privileged process, meaning that it can run those commands <laughs> and anything else on the system as it turns out, uh, was really the best idea. What you normally would do here is create a service and you have two services talking to one another. And this you kind of, I mean, the, the general approach is different in different scenarios, but like in the Linux kernel, you might have seen the term, you know, user land before, oh, that happens in user land. And so you write your kernel module, the device driver in Windows vernacular, and it, it provides an interface to user land to be able to do stuff. Sometimes that's in proc, sometimes it's in sys, depends on how far back you go on the Linux side of things. 
but I feel like that is a step that was skipped here, probably due to lack of engineering time, would be my guess. Um, and so in so doing, this installation, like the philosophy, the method here, has actually opened up a huge amount of, of security issues. Security is kind of like an onion. You kind of want to plan for the worst case scenario. It's like, oh, they might be able to break out of that. Let's do this. They might be able to break out of that. Let's do this. That's why those options are in Apache, like the directory directive and preventing somebody from being able to do it. Now, at least in XAMPP, it doesn't appear that XAMPP is configured for PHP remote debugging uh, because that would have been really bad. The PHP remote debugging would let you, you know, step through a PHP program using a debugger program hooked up on, on, the, on the local port or over the network, as, as the case may be, depending on how it's listening and, and things like that. So, you know, don't grab your torches and pitchforks. It's not really a huge deal. <laughs> Definitely, if this were Google or Microsoft, you know, I would be getting the, the $1,337 bug bounty thing for, for having a security issue. I don't think AMD has a program. I did reach out to my contacts to notify them. It's like, hey, uh, there's some weird stuff going on here. Didn't hear back, don't really know what to make of it. Uh, it is kind of, I mean, between like the home computer and not really the enterprise, yeah. but I feel like that because AMD is going to have to, you know, do a better job in the future, I think. It's not terrible. It's just not a great situation. And if all of this other stuff bothers you, you can just run the command line stuff. You don't really need the Apache side of things. You don't really need the other functionality. But if this is something that you're interested in, even not having you know, a Threadripper system with NVMe RAID, you can install the drivers and take a look at what it does and take a look at how it uses PHP for its front end. There may be other vulnerabilities within the PHP system itself or anything like that. I really didn't do a deep dive. I really did not do any kind of deep forensic analysis. I just did sort of the basics, really. It's like, is Apache configured to lock down the directories? Is PHP otherwise basically locked down? But you know, having the XAMPP development server there, not really, not really a great idea. It's a little bit like you walk into a bank and there's no bank teller there. You get some instructions and it's like, okay, you need to set your, your username and password for accessing the bank. And it's like, okay. And it's like, hey, uh, I've written down an IOU from, from Bob and my IOU from Bob says he owes me $2,000. Can you just go ahead and cash that? And if you can actually convince the Apache process to do that, then the Apache process will totally do that because the Apache process has the privileges to be able to do that. So it's not really an ideal scenario. In, a, in the whole security onion thing, it's like if you convince the teller or whoever you're interfacing with, it's like, hey, an IOU is good for a cash withdrawal. Uh, whoever the teller is talking to would, would, would say, no, that's not, that's not allowed. You need to tell the customer that that's not allowed. So you got you know, sort of multiple layers of sandboxing, multiple layers of issues. The way this is now, definitely not optimal. I'm Wendell, and that's been a level one diagnostic. If you want an even deeper dive, by all means, come to the forum, ask questions. If you'd like to know more, but sort of about, you know, what I did, or uh, you missed a step or whatever, this is really kind of basic, but kind of an interesting story as well. Like, I hope you enjoyed it. It's, it's really fascinating, I think, that this is the drivers. I mean, this is the thing. Uh, one of the showstopper issues with the drivers was like the, if you already had SATA RAID, there's not a clean path to upgrade from SATA RAID to this. So, uh, you know, I don't know. That's that's what I originally started out investigating. When I was like, well, why is why 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 would there be an issue with with migration there? Is it just a matter of you know software firmware? You know what's going on? Is it because it's bootable? Is there a way to repair it? I you know I don't know. It's it's been fun. It's it's been interesting. But if there are any managers or infosec people out there and they want to want to comment on what I've commented on, by all means, come to the Level 1 forums. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.